Ah, I missed that clap. Welcome. It's your friendly neighborhood badger here, and I'm back with a Path of Exile video. Thank you for uh, waiting all this time in my uh, hiatus of uh, videos here, but we're back with an Endless Delve video, talking about everything you need to know about Endless Delve, at least from my perspective, uh, and a couple of ideas for builds for each of the Ascendancy classes if you want to have a little bit of fun, both some hardcore and softcore options. Uh, but Endless Delve, what is Endless Delve? We're going to quickly go over that, and I'm going to run you through a few of my personal tips, mine and chat's tips, so thank you so much, chat, uh, that can probably help you through Endless Delve in the best way possible. So, you know what? Let's, uh, let's jump right into that, shall we? So Endless Delve is running for 10 days, and it is happening tomorrow. Basically, at the upload of this video, it's around about 22, 23 hours time. So hopefully you've got enough time to figure out a build and figure out the best way to tackle this. Endless Delve is exactly as it states. If you didn't play the last one, you are stuck in Delve. There is no mapping, there is no leveling through the acts, it is just Delve. And the big fun thing is you don't have to worry at all about Sulfite. You can just travel from node to node, you can go as deep as you can, uh, and yeah, that's quite important there as well, as deep as you can. Because as we know, Delve has been updated recently, and it's a little bit more difficult. More rewarding, but more difficult. Uh, there are even prizes. Um, Demigod's Authority is a special unique item that can only be obtained in races such as this, and there are five available for each Ascendancy class. So we will be talking about Ascendancies here today, uh, but the Demigod's Authority is going to the top five of each Ascendancy class. Uh, so if you, you know, fancy yourself a little bit of a, uh, a gamer, you can uh, try and go for one of these, either in Softcore or in Hardcore, but there is no party play, so you can only do Solo Self Found in Delve. Uh, so these are pretty fun to uh, try and grind for there. But regardless of that, there are a couple of things you do need to know. You do level up from level one, but you also get access to Lily Roth, who's going to be giving you gems, or, you know, you can buy gems from Lily Roth, but you can also now trade divination cards with Lily Roth. That is a difference from last delve, you couldn't do divination cards at all, but this time around you can. You also gain your Ascendancy passive skill points when you reach levels matching the area level of each labyrinth, which is uh, 33, 55, and 68. And then 75, I think, uh, is what uh, is going to be the uh, four, I guess, uh, ascendancy points right there. And then you also get three passive skill points to make up for the ones you normally get from quests as well. So, all in all, experience from last time as well, playing the Endless Delve, it was a really, really smooth leveling process. Way smoother than the actual leveling through Axe is itself, because you don't have to do side quests for passive points, you don't have to kill all of these bosses, uh, you, 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 all you have to really worry about is at level 40 and level 70, you get your negative 30 and negative 60 to your resistances, respectively. That's basically all you need to know about the Endless Delve, but here are a couple of, uh, my tips, my Endless Delve tips for you right here, because, uh, there's some, uh, interesting things you should know. First of all, destroying corpses is amazingly powerful, just like in normal Path of Exile, Utilizing bleed pops from Gladiator or Occultus Profane Bloom, even Obliteration Wands, it adds a big layer of survivability due to some deadly on-death effects at times on specific nodes. There's some really nasty kind of uh, ice uh, mob uh, on-death effects. You can even, you know, freeze and shatter mobs. That works as well. Now, boss damage is not very important in this event if you want to go very, very deep. Although, you know, damage is important, but it's, you know, it's not absolutely mandatory for you to have the best boss damage you possibly can. You want to be focusing more on your clearing and move speed, both at the same time, if you can, with whatever skills you're doing. Some skills like Blade Vortex, Righteous Fire, Toxic Rain, Plague Bearer, Cold Dot, Corrupting Fever, they're all S-tier clearing skills. Now, you know, granted, if you do want to tackle that all as you go down, just for a bit of fun, if you're in softcore and you don't mind, you know, uh, dying over over and over a few times, you know, maybe you do want to consider a little bit more boss damage right there. But if you just want to get down pretty deep or do relatively well, focusing more on the clear is going to be uh, very, very nice. 
If you do want to race, be considerate that the Demigod's prizes are ascendancy based. So what that means is though Gladiator might be the most popular or Chieftain I think at the moment is looking very popular, you might consider going a very underrated ascendancy for an easier time getting in the top five. Uh, the next tip that I do have here is phasing is pretty much a must. Phasing is, uh, for those who, you know, trying to uh, bring it back to your mind, phasing is a buff that means that you can walk through monsters, basically. In Delve, getting stuck in packs of monsters can spell certain deaths. So using a Quartz Flask for phasing, specking into phasing on the tree, or just playing Raider for free phasing, it's pretty vital to your survival. Another thing is loot filters are quite important, because this is Thank entirely Delve. Uh, oh, thank you for the uh, new subscriber there, Itereth. Uh, I'm just going to uh, quickly uh, mute that here one second. I forgot to mute the alerts because uh, we are live on stream right now. Hang on. Uh, thank you, Itereth, for the uh, for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, uh, loot filter is quite important because it's entirely delve. You can filter out things that will be of no use, such as maps. Uh, it will just cl be clutter on the ground you don't need. I think there's a loot filter, uh, yeah, there's a loot filter I've yoinked from Reddit linked at the bottom of this video if you're lazy like me and don't want to make your own. Alright, next, any ascendancy that gives good resistances, like Chieftain, 100% fire res, is pretty amazing due to not having access to easy capping of resistances through benchcraft. So consider making sure you're capped for the next Kataba curse as soon as you can before it happens, negative 30 at level 40 and negative 60 at level 70. My little tip is try to be 30% overcapped at level 35 and 60% overcapped at level 65, uh, just so you've got a little bit of a buffer there. You don't, you know, you don't have to be overcapped by those points, but it's really nice to aim for that if you can. It will really help you gear. Um, if you're finding that you get to level 35 or level 65 and you're pretty undercapped, don't go any deeper because obviously the experience gets much better. Just try to go across in Delve and try and find some good armor nodes or jewelry nodes, depending on what kind of stuff you need, and just. Uh, try and see if you can find uh, some nice uh, defensive resistance uh, rares for you. All right, that brings me to the next part of the video, some fun build ideas for each Ascendancy. Uh, now, these are not necessarily the best builds for each Ascendancy. You know, I haven't spent uh, 60 hours uh, going through everything and making sure that... Uh, these are going to be the best builds. And I also don't have POBs for all of them. These are suggestions to you for, for builds that I think will be fun and will be relatively strong in this Endless Delve here as well. And we're going to go through each Ascendancy. First of all, Elementalist. Uh, as I said up above, I think Blade Vortex is going to be pretty strong. So you can do just a Blade Vortex Duel or Triple Herald with uh, Herald of Fire, uh, well, Herald of Ash, Herald of Ice. You could put Herald of Thunder in there as well. Um, I think the, uh, Blade Vortex, uh, or even Quad Herald, you, basically stacking Heralds here is going to be really nice, because you're just going to get some pretty decent explosions. A great thing with Elementalist as well, is you can use Obliteration Wands, and you could go for, like, an Ignite Blade Vortex, uh, and the Obliteration Wands with the Shaper of Flames node in Elementalist will proc and basically destroy everything on your screen. It's really nice. Necromancer, I think some sort of corpse skill. Spellslinger, Detonate Dead, and Volatile Dead is really, really good. We don't have access to Trigger Craft, but it's still great. But you can also do Self Cast, Detonate Dead as well. Occultist is either going to be really fun with Vortex Cold Dot or Wintertide Brand, uh, maybe CI. Or you can also go Poison Blade Vortex, is going to be very strong as well. Uh, Assassin. Uh, also, Poison Blade Vortex, I think, is going to be very, very strong. You can turn in those Obliteration cards now, so. Uh, it's going to be a very, very fast clear skill. Trickster, I'd probably just go ED Contagion. Uh, I think it's been enough semi out of the meta. I guess it's still kind of in the meta, but semi out of the meta that it's... Look, it's still a pretty fun and uh, fast build to play. Saboteur is probably looking at Fizz Traps, like we've had the meta for this league. Exsanguinate, Seismic, or you can do Icicle Mines. That's also really, really nice for Delve. Raider... It, it kind of has to be Toxic Rain. You can play other bow skills, but Toxic Rain is just looking, you know, best in slot. Deadeye is probably Icicle Mines. You can do Toxic Rain. You can do Ice Shot. Deadeye is going to be pretty nice just for uh, clearing in front of you and, and zooming fast. Pathfinder, probably Poison Blade Vortex or Poisonous Concoction. Now, Poisonous Concoction is uh, very slept on. I, You know what? I should probably put that up here in the, uh, in the Occultist as well. Uh, poison... Concoction, uh, because it's a really, really strong skill this league, and doesn't need much gear to be uh, way stronger than it needs to be. 
Uh, just remember with Poisonous Concoction, you do need to... Uh, uh, probably a couple of good life flasks for that one right there. Uh, Gladiator. Corrupting Fever Exsanguinate Slinger is going to be really, really strong. Uh, at least for clear. Now, you are going to notice that the, the damage does fall off, but if you want a fast clearing skill for the first, let's say, 200, 250 depths even, uh, Corrupting Fever Exsanguinate Sl Slinger is going to be really strong. Slayer, I'd probably just go a physical cyclone. You can either go swords, you can even go axes, uh, but my favorite is actually going uh, staff, a crit staff, Slayer, Fizz Cyclone, um, with Shockwave uh, is quite strong. Champion, I like the steel skills on Champion. Shattering Steel, Lancing Steel, Shield Crush and Shield Charge Impale, Spectral Helix. There's some good options for Champion. Uh, Champion's still pretty underrated at the moment, I think, uh, and quite defensive, so you'll you'll find some uh, some good skills with the champion right there. Chieftain. This is potentially my pick, or was going to be my pick until uh, Jung Ron beat me to it with a video, and now I think it's going to be pretty flooded with people playing Chieftain, and so I might not be able to go for my demigods on Chieftain. Uh, but Blade Vortex Fire Conversion. Now, uh, Blade Vortex Fire Conversion actually got me to first place Chieftain uh, last Endless Delve in Hardcore until I ripped, so I didn't actually get first place at the end of the event, but I was holding first place for the first, I think, like 36 hours, you know, day and a half, and it was super, super, super nice. Um, really, really tanky, super good clear. I loved it. Uh, so I really would, you know, basically back Jung Rowan on his uh, BV Seismic Trapper Chieftain. It's really good. You know what? I'll, I'll link that down below as well. It's It's very strong. Check that out. Juggernaut. I would say Herald of Agony for depth, although it's going to be quite slow. You can do Lightning Strike, though. Lightning Strike Juggernaut's pretty fun uh, for some speed, maybe. Juggernaut's one I'm kind of uh, a little bit uh, iffy on. Berserker is looking like a Shield Crush. General Scry will be very strong, as well as Rage Vortex. They're both very strong skills right there. Hierophant. Uh, Storm Brand, Armor Brand. Brands are quite good. In, uh, in Delve, but I would go Mind Over Matter on Hierophant. You can do Totems, I just don't really like Totems in Delve. Inquisitor, I think Stormbrand is really strong if you want to go for some speed and some DPS. It's not too hardcore viable, but very good. Although what is hardcore viable is Righteous Fire, Inquisitor, and also very, very strong this league. I would probably suggest that much uh, more than the Stormbrand. Righteous Fire is very strong. Uh, Guardian, Dominating Blow is going to be really cool as well. I think that's probably just best uh, best in slot skill for Guardian. And lastly, Ascendant, still trying to figure this one out, but Reap Exsanguinate Slinger. Uh, Spell Slinger does look very strong. That's basically all of my suggestions and tips for Endless Delve. Let me know what you think, uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, and if you're still watching at the end of this, let me know what your favorite holiday destination is uh, in the comments down below. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm back. Thanks for uh, thanks for waiting for some more Path of Exile content. But uh, yeah, have fun in Endless Delve, and I'll see you soon. Until next time, Badger, out.